So this is going to be a simple tutorial on how to create a uh, triggered animation in the Blender game engine. Let's start off by creating the scene. I'm just going to use primitives. I'm going to make this as quick as possible. I'm just going to use uh, duplicate. Then I'm going to scale this. Do it up. Scale the faces. L to create to select the island, then boolean, then then uh modify this a little bit. I'm gonna take this, make sure the center points in the center of the mass. Gonna rotate it on the x-axis a little bit, duplicate it, rotate on the x. And this is going to be the basic set setup. Now we're going to create a small elevator. So duplicate one of those cylinders, move it on the y axis, shorten it up a little bit. Now I'm going to create a face here so that the ball doesn't roll out of here. Create using the vertices. So now what I'm going to do is add the ball. We're going to add a small bully ball or armar ball. Go down and into the elevator, which will eventually go back up. Um, so right now, if I add the ball, nothing happens because it's not a rigid body. So what we want to do is go into the physics, create a rigid body. Now it might fall off here. I think if it does, I'll, I'll just we'll just create a face here. Um, but we'll see. Very close. You might just want to create a face anyway. that it just doesn't come out. Um, the force of this elevator might want it to push it out, so we'll just keep, keep it consistent and closed. And now if we play it through, we'll see this ball rolling down, rolling down, and into our elevator. Now the elevator doesn't do anything. What we want to do is create a logic event so that it takes, takes the collision event and then goes through an action. Also, what we want to do is create the animation that is the action. Uh, since this is a sort of a complicated, not really complicated, but it's not straightforward, doesn't go into an x-axis directly, you could probably plot out the point in the logic, but I'm just going to create an animation so that um, we can create a custom motion as we have it. So first of all, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to create a keyframe for location and rotation. Because we're going to have to move this and then rotate it. So we need both location and rotation. Let's move it 20 frames ahead. Press I for location rotation. Move it 10 frames ahead. Little trick is if you press shift up, you'll do 10 frames ahead in the timeline here. Let's move it forward and then rotate it down. Now, this is happening because the center point isn't at the center of the mass. If we change the center of the mass, it might screw up the animation yeah it does 
But um, we, we'll just fix that. No big, no worries. So let's move this over here. Location rotation. On, rotate on X. Actually, well, let's not rotate it just yet. Move it up, 10, up. Now rotate on X. Uh, location rotation. Let's fix this. Now we have a little animation that we can use. We also want it to go back down after a certain point. So what we can do is take the dope sheet, just copy, duplicate each frame that you want to go through in the reverse order. The timing of this doesn't really matter because the ball doesn't shouldn't be there anymore. Only thing that matters is the fact that the ball might have to roll down a couple frames. So what we want to do is space this fairly fairly out a little bit, just to make sure that the ball is out of the elevator by the time it goes back into the backwards animation. So now if we scrub through, get a small animation that goes up, use the ball down, goes back. Now what we want to do is create a collision event that triggers this animation. Go into the logic editor, select add sensor, under sensor, add sensor, uh, and then select collision. This and also create a uh, actuator and then select action which will go through the actual animation. We select the animation that we have. Right now it's by default cylinder 03 action. You can name it whatever action you want in the dope sheet. If you go in here and you go in the action editor, you can name it right here, but let's just keep it default. Now what you want to do is noodle this over here. And then what you also want to do is make sure that the starting frame and the end frame are correct. So now you want to go back into your timeline. Make sure that your end frame is at, I would tweak this animation. I wouldn't, I mean like this is, this is based off of this animation, but um, yeah, just make sure you, uh, you find what time, but, what keyframe that you're ending the animation on. So this one's 94. And now go into Logic Editor, put 94 here, or whatever. What was your last keyframe? And check off Continue, because otherwise it would just keep on continuing if it's on the collision. Now if we press Play, Kind of a little wonky, but yeah, that, that's the basics of it. Um, yeah, so what you would want to do, what I'd do, is uh, I'd put a roof on it. If you wanted to create like a little transparent roof, that's fine too. Um, right now, if you want to make a transparent roof, you just assign this as a material, create a new material, assign this face on a specific material, Turn on transparency. Then move the alpha down. So if you go press play, if you press play, it should just be transparent. And it is, it just 
bleeds through. So yeah, that's basically how I created this setup. Now, if you wanted to set this camera as the default camera always, what I would do is create an always sensor on this camera, then create a scene, set camera to that camera. Now noodle this in, press P, and now your camera is set to the, that one camera. Now if you want tracking on this camera, what I would also do is create an act, another actuar, actuator that says uh, camera, and then set it to the sphere. This, act, this uh, actuator essentially just tracks the sphere based on its position. Set this to always. Now if you press play, your camera will start tracking the ball. Also, you can play around with the, ax the axis here, which will give you different different directions of which where your camera is tracking. Now, if you don't want to have that nauseating circling motion that the camera does whenever the ball rolls, because it's tracking a certain position on the ball, what I would do is I would select the ball, make sure that the cursor is set to active, then I would add an empty, a plane axis. And I would just parent this plane axis to the sphere, pressing Control P, then parent it as a vertex. Then what you would do is select the camera, then make sure the camera object is set to the empty. Now if you press P, you shouldn't have that much, that rolling action because the uh, empty doesn't roll. It just follows the ball. So yeah, that's it.